All right, we're launching into chapter two now. I'm uh, going to do some paper and pencil work. Um, so uh, we're talking about rates of change. Uh, let's ask a simple question. If you took a half hour to drive 30 miles, uh, 20 miles, what was your speed? Well, you'd probably say a uh, distance of 20 miles and half an hour gives you 40 miles per hour. Now, was that your speed exactly the whole time? Well, no, that was more of your average speed. You don't probably weren't going exactly 40 the whole time. What did we do here, this 20 miles and half an hour? You can think of that as the difference of where you started and where you stopped, 20 miles, and the difference of when you started and when you stopped, uh, half an hour, which is a lot like a forward difference quotient or a backward difference quotient. Um, we said already that's like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's an average rate of change From x2, from x1 to x2. But it's sometimes important, quite often, to figure out what's the rate of change at any one particular instant, which is basically what a speedometer tells you. Um, or we were asking in the Houston population problem, um, what's the rate of change of the population going to be 25 years from now? And we did it with forward difference quotient, backward difference quotient, but we also had a formula for it. Remember, we had fitted trend lines and we saw that an exponential was better than a polynomial. The exact coefficients aren't important right now, but it was some number times e to the some other number times x or t. And the USA population, there the formula uh, polynomial was better than an exponential, so it was some number, it doesn't really matter what right now, times x cubed plus some other number times x squared plus some other number times x plus some other number. You can tell sometimes precision is important right now, it doesn't really matter. Um, so real world formulas often have lots of numbers with lots of decimals in them, um, but sometimes it's nice to take a step back from all that and just look at something simpler. So let's look at something simpler. And if we can figure out what's going on for that, then we can figure, on what, figure out what's going on for these other things. Um, how about f of x equals x cubed? Uh, and let's ask uh, what's going on at time five. So we're going to focus on time five. So we'll quickly draw x cubed, that's five. And we want to know how fast is the function changing at time five, or what is the rate of change at time five? Um, so we know how to do rate of change from one time to another time, so let's pick another time. Another obvious time would be 6, because that's near 5. Um, so let's just try that. So from time 5 to time 6. And let's do a forward difference quotient. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And another name for y is f at a particular x value. So f of x sub 2 gives us y2. f of x1 gives us y1. 
over x2 minus x1. Um, so here, 5 is x1, 6 is x2. There we go. Um, so this will be 6 cubed minus 5 cubed over 6 minus 5, which is 216 minus 125 over 1, which is 91 over 1. So that's our average rate of change from 5 to 6. From x equals 5 to x equals 6 is 91. If this was population, that would be 91 people per year or something like that. Um, so that seems like a good answer, but if we wanted to know the rate of change right at time 5, why are we going all the way to time 6? Maybe we should try um, times closer to 5. So, uh, so let's plan out what we're going to try. Um, we said from 5 to 6, the rate of change, the average rate of change, was 91. Uh, what if we tried from 5 to 5.1? Well, we could all do all this arithmetic again and get some number. Uh, we could sneak up on 5 by doing 5 to 5.01 or 5 and 5.001. Um, and it looks like that's going to be a lot of arithmetic. Uh, and anytime you feel like you're going to be doing a lot of arithmetic, a good solution is, hey, let's turn to a computer. So we'll do that in our next video.